I'm Professor Owen Devereux of the Faculty of Arts, Humanities and Social Sciences at UL. I'd like to talk today about fan relationships with David Bowie and more particularly about fan responses to his passing in January 2016. The outpouring of genuine emotions and grief by Bowie fans all over the world are testimony, I think, to the ways in which he touched so many people's lives. It also suggests to us that fandom and fan practices are clear examples of how meaning about important issues uh, is created and the fact that we need to examine these carefully. Fans, I think, strongly connect with David Bowie as a result of the multifaceted way in which Bowie presented or constructed himself. And as the title of the beautiful v &A retrospective exhibition on his life and work, David Bowie is, suggests, David Bowie is whatever we make of him. Bowie's work, to use John Fiske's term, is polysemic, meaning that it can be read and interpreted by fans on a multiple of levels. So what are these levels through which fans connect with David Bowie? Well, I think his ambiguity about sexuality and gender, his long-term queering strategies, his outrageous image, his capacity to invent and to reinvent personae, his wonderful lyrics, obviously, and captivating sounds, all contributed to the creation of a distinctive art. And while Bowie's work dealt consistently with feelings of dislocation and alienation, Bowie's music, as the sociologist Nick Stevenson reminds us, is ultimately full of hope. David Bowie was a born survivor who managed to overcome hard drug dependency and significant mental health issues through using his creative genius. I think his message to us is that we can change, we can reinvent ourselves. His final recordings, The Next Day on Black Star, deal openly and honestly with very complex questions concerning existence and our very mortality. So over five decades, Bowie managed to capture the, the zeitgeist, the spirit of the age, culturally, politically, socially, and to speak directly to millions of people. He did this, I think, by drawing upon a vast array of influences. And these influences were cleverly used from his insights into painting, books, film, and mime to create his unique art. And like the Irish playwright Samuel Beckett, David Bowie had the capacity to keep us all guessing until the very, very end. Some of this came from the fact that he was a well-read and well-informed artist who drew upon a deep well of influences such as Buddhism, German Expressionism, philosophy, communications theory, mime, Oriental culture and Jungian psychology. Perhaps Bowie's real strength as an artist, as a creator, was his capacity to synthesize complex ideas and make ample use of them in his creative work. So if you think about his video for Lazarus or the video for Ashes to Ashes, the amount of thought that he put into creating these videos to represent his work and the way in which they can be interpreted in a variety of ways, uh, I think is, is quite telling. If you think about the amount of uh, traffic on social media following Bowie's death, one day after Bowie died, there were 4.3 million tweets posted about uh, Bowie. The fan response to Bowie's death reminds us that fandom is about production, performance, and participation. Fandom, of course, is often about community. The days following Bowie's death saw spontaneous gatherings of fans in places closely associated with the singer. Fans participated in communal gatherings in New York, Berlin, Dublin, and Brixton to talk about David Bowie, to sing his songs, to dress like him, to look like him, and crucially, to express what he meant to people in their personal lives. We know also that fans engaged in the production of media and other forms of content. Places like Brixton in London saw the creation of sacred spaces. And this reminds us that even in a world where organized religion is in decline, the sacred is still a feature of the social world. Fan-created Bowie shrines sprung up with offerings of flowers, pictures, posters, and crucially, fan essays. These fan essays posted online and on walls and places associated with Bowie are particularly revealing. One post-it note stated, RIP Starman, you blew our minds. Another short note to Bowie said, without you, I would be a different person. Thank you for the songs. They made me realize I wasn't alone in how I felt. A longer and really interesting fan essay 
pinned on the wall outside the studio in Hendon Street, London, where Ziggy Stardust was recorded, detailed the relationship that a young female fan had with Bowie's album The Next Day. The overarching and recurring theme of these fan creations was concerning the significance of David Bowie's art and creativity in terms of the connections these things made with people's emotional lives. They remind us of the powerful connection made between Bowie's music and people's own biographies. And they remind us that fandom is ultimately agentic. It is creative. It is not something that we can just kind of dismiss as being frivolous. Rather, it's a key into, in a world of popular culture and social media, it's a key into looking at how meaning is created and indeed the meaning that fans make of globally circulated culture. I'm Professor Owen Devereaux of the Faculty of Arts, Humanities and Social Sciences at UL. If you are interested in this talk and you want to find out more about fandom, about media, about popular culture, perhaps you might consider studying at UL at undergraduate or postgraduate level, where many of these themes are discussed and researched about in detail. Mm -hmm.